Alpha Delta corner of the home. Did we rehearse this? Have you seen this video before? Never seen it. How are you that good? <laughs> I guess because I've watched a lot of videos, watched a lot of game film. Amazing. Our guest today is Captain Sean Gray from Cobb County Fire in Georgia. He's a national instructor, he's an author, and we're gonna answer questions like, are we teaching steam expansion wrong? What myths are out there about exterior streams? And how can you overcome handline flow problems? We're debunking some common wisdom you've been taught with the debunker himself. All right, Sean, when I saw you, I said I got starstruck because uh, we had the, <laughs> the great fortune of shooting, I think it was five episodes of Fully Involved with you. I really appreciate you yeah, giving no, us some pearls of wisdom. Thank you so much for having me for that. That was really special to be in Cobb County to be able to film that. So we're super excited to see him come out. Tell me about what we did, just for those who don't know. I mean, what do you remember about that day, um, about what we, what our mission was? You know, the mission is to try to get some uh, short snippets of exactly what you can do with your nozzle and, and uh, how extinguishment really is the key to uh, everything. And so we were trying to show all the different ways of, uh, you know, from interior to exterior streams to streams while people are in the middle of searching to all of that stuff to but not be afraid of water and really try to talk to the fire service about that to, um, to be able to search opposite of hose lines. And uh, that's something that we haven't done, you know, really in a long time because we thought we were gonna get injured by streams. And so trying to educate people that they're, you know, they're really not all that harmful. Yeah, so tell me what, what is misunderstood about that? Yeah, so the misunderstanding is that, uh, you know, in some of our textbooks, it used to say, you know, uh, steam expands by 1,700 times, and so uh, water expands into steam by 1,700 times. So when that, when you put water into an environment, into a hot environment, there could be somebody in there searching. You could push fire or push steam and gases onto other firefighters, causing injury, and that's simply not the case. We have a huge, massive amount of contraction, gas contraction when you get water onto the fire, so those gases contract, they don't expand, as we previously thought. Um, and so it was one, one of those things where it was uh, these stories that got told at the firehouse kitchen tables and, uh, and those stories stuck in people's minds even though they had never experienced it. So trying to take some of the research, applying that to your experience, putting those together makes you, you know, better, faster, safer firefighter. How do you like to approach some of those controversial topics? Because you're not afraid to speak your mind. Like if, if you think that there's something that, that you feel is accurate, even if it's not a popular stance, like you'll stick up for it. Can you tell me another example of that? Yeah, sure. So about, uh, I guess it's been almost 15 years now. So 15 years ago, exterior streams were very controversial. And I was kind of one of the first ones that put together a class and got out there and started speaking about it. And definitely had some hate over the years, especially on social media, uh, created Stop Believing and Start Knowing, a Facebook page, and that was very controversial in the beginning. And now as time has gone on and more research has occurred, uh, you've just seen things kind of evolve. And uh, as they have evolved, he, the conversation just turned into the way, what we were already talking about, you know? So I felt pretty confident by putting my neck out there that I had research to back up what I was talking about. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, there was still some friction and uh, you're fighting against, you know, fire service tradition. And, um, and a lot of the people that were out there speaking against it in the beginning are now completely on board and have done a full 180. So it's kind of nice to see some of that. I know you're a big smoothbore fan. Um, can you tell me what kind of where you where you fit into the nozzle conversation? So, you know, with technology today and the low pressure nozzles, smoothbore or fog, honestly, like when I have that conversation with people, I'm like, hey, I don't care which one, right? You, if you're gonna be a, have a fog nozzle, I just needed you to have it right to fight, not left for lobster. So I needed to have it all the way on the right, so it's gotta be on a straight stream. And I have my new guys check their nozzle every morning to make sure that that thing's on the right. But if not, I, li I prefer a smooth board because firefighters can't screw that up, right? It's just open and close. Unless you really start moving the nozzle and whipping it around, that's the only thing that you could break up the stream enough to cause some sort of push of air and uh, that's why I prefer a smooth bore is because it's really easy to use. It's just open and close. Fog nozzle's a little bit more advanced and, uh, and some people do prefer a fog for hydraulic ventilation purposes or things like that, but at the same time, you I can teach you how to do hydraulic ventilation with a smooth bore nozzle just as well. So um, yeah, so I, I prefer the smooth bore just because again, they can't screw that up. It's just open and close. Um, you know, your, your, your partner in crime, PJ Norwood, big water mapping guy, um, how much um, 
How important is that to you? How important yeah, is the water you know, mapping? Water mapping has, uh, I, you know, in my class here today that, that we're going to talk about. So I have a video from a, a fire in Cobb County where we had a, a firefighter who had been on about eight years and hadn't really ever been taught anything about water mapping. So he flows water up into the, from the exterior up into the window and really whips the nozzle around, doesn't let the nozzle, doesn't let the water do its thing at all, right? So it goes all over the place. And then the fire does not get extinguished. It got knocked down a little bit, but not fully extinguished. Well, then they made it inside and they got hung up in some uh, hoarding conditions. They couldn't get the line all the way to the base of the fire. So another engine shows up and they're like, hey, what can we do? I was like, pull a second line and let's get somebody to knock that down. It's a rookie. He's brand new. It's his very first fire and his nozzle control and nozzle movement was perfect because we had put him in the water mapping prop in training and that's all he knew. He didn't know any better, right? So it was just sweep the eave, Line down into the window, off the ceiling, straight stream, perfectly knocked down and extinguished the fire. And then as he's bringing the nozzle out, he hits the top of the window, water banks down, done and over with. And that's a brand new guy in his very first fire. And he did much better extinguishment with somebody who was eight years. So that's where the water mapping and the water mapping prop really makes a difference for training firefighters. What, what, you know, there's always haters. Um, what do haters say to you about water mapping? I think people are going to say, oh, why do I need to know all this stuff about the water droplets and how they travel? It's like, well, because most people in the books, when I came up, it, there were pictures in our It's the Training Manuals that basically showed water hitting the ceiling and coming down onto the, like, water droplets dropping down like tennis balls, right? It doesn't do that at all. It actually, you know, goes across the surfaces goes, surfs across the surfaces, comes down, extinguishes all the gases that are in that room, ultimately taking away the flashover conditions of that room and everything lit off. And then you still got to get water to the interior onto the base of the fire, but it takes everything out. So understanding what the water is doing is really important. All right, so you're on a desert island, and you know you're going to have to fight fires on this desert island. I know that situation, scenario doesn't make sense, but roll with me. Okay. You have room for to take one smoothbore nozzle with you. What are you taking? Seven eight smoothbore tip all day, because no hesitation. Nope, no hesitation. So that flow rate at 160 GPMs um, with a smaller hose line, it's so much more manageable. And uh, through all the research we've shown, like we we put out massive fires in some of our research studies, um, and I've been fortunate to be on the nozzle for some of those. So openly flowing a nozzle and, and it doing some true extinguishment with a 7-8 smoothbore nozzle, uh, it, it's about getting the water in the right place, right? It's not about that large flow that you need. That's what a lot of people think, like, oh, I gotta have more GPMs. No, you actually don't need more GPMs. You need proper placement of the nozzle and maneuverability of your hose line to get it into the right place. We haven't really delved into the monitor conversation. What's a common problem that you think um monitors can our ground monitors especially can solve and then we did a lot with the blitz fire yep when we were um shooting videos with you yeah so one of the things yeah. about the uh, the blitz fire for example our comma monitors other manufacturers that are out there is the water monitors are going up into the space so we we'll just say give a scenario of a warehouse fire, warehouse fire and we're in defensive operations we have ground monitors on the ground the the host streams headed up right up into the up into the surfaces well in those surfaces, if you look at the ceiling above us, what do you think that water is going to do? Again, water mapping comes into place. In commercial applications, that water is just bouncing all over the ceiling. It's really not doing anything. It's not extinguishing anything. So the blitz fire has the advantage of where you can get the, the nozzle down really low, down onto the burning fuels into the warehouses. And I think that that's providing better extinguishment than some of the other mon ground monitors that are out there. Well, I mean, what happens if you don't have the ability to hit that low? It, you end up just... There are, are ways to do it. You can turn them onto their side and flip them onto their side to try to get it down low that way. But yeah, I mean, there are techniques that you can do, but why not design a nozzle that can make it actually get down onto the burning fuels? It's not gonna have major issues also. Yeah. And there's, you know, I get that there's those higher volumes, it starts to move the nozzle back the more that you break it down low, but you guys were able to engineer that and put it down low, so it works out great. On my home department, we had a situation where we were set up at the street level because but it's as close as we could get to the building. The deck gun couldn't get under the eave, and we didn't have a ground monitor on the, on the vehicle that day, so we had to do it with handline operations, and we struggled. Not having the right tool for the right job. It's, it's, it's that simple. Hey, I'm Paul Neely at Task Force Tips. I'd like to talk to you today about the blitz fire. You know, if you don't have that low attack angle, a lot of times you can't make the front of the building. If, if your monitor won't go down to 10 degrees, you can't get in the front door, you can't get in the front windows, you can't get in the front garage door. Wait, um, just picking your brains, what was the last problem you encountered uh, on a call? Uh, 
man, there's one I think on every single call, right? <laughs> I think that's what's good about being a fire a firefighter is that uh, it's always troubleshooting and be able to do stuff. So, um, but yeah, uh, you know, I think the biggest problem is on fires is making that stretch and realizing that your flow might not be accurate. So one thing that I always try to tell my firefighters, when you check your nozzle at the front door and we're checking our stream, make sure that you understand what the flow rate should look like, what it should look like. Understand from training that, hey, I don't have a proper stream. I have a lower flow rate and I need to go back and kick out kinks in my line. Try to bump the nozzle a couple of times to get the kinks to come out, but really understanding that if you don't have enough flow rate and you're trying you're thinking about calling on the radio and telling the pump operator to, to bump up the pressure that's probably not the issue he's probably got it it's already it's automatically set it's 120 psi on a pre-connect he knows how what to pump it at it's already set at 120 it's you have a kink in your line somewhere and you need to fix that line wow wealth of knowledge do you mind if i show you a video can i have you kind Love of do it. a john madden and do, sure. a, do a color commentary okay. on a, yeah from your from your old facebook page so this is from Stop Believing, Start yep. Knowing? Yes, sir. They okay. shared a uh, department's page. All right, so we're getting a live read on this. You, All right, so. I know your eyes are immediately going to a m bunch of different things. I'm going to know how your brain is processing what you're looking at. Well, you know, first of all, we're sizing this building. Obviously, I have heavy fire involvement, about one third involved in the front of the house. And uh, so we're going to stretch a line. But to be honest, don't be, don't let the, uh, the light show scare you. This is an inch and three quarter fire. We can put this fire out. We don't need big operations. We don't need to be a water. It's that big fire, big water thing. People take that too literally. Um, yeah, on a warehouse, sure. But in this scenario, this is a residential structure. It's 1,500 square feet. We, we need maneuverability because we need to knock this thing down. So I would initially take this line, knock down this fire from the exterior as much as I can, get to the interior, start pulling ceiling, and then get water up into the attic to try to cut it off. But there's also a ton of searchable space that I see here, right? There's windows all the way off to the left, and that searchable space is really important. Looks like we've got some power lines popping off. So if somebody is going to be on that corner over there trying to extinguish, they need to know that that power line's right there. But yeah, that's, this is an inch and three quarter line all day. Are you looking at the smoke? I mean, some people are all about the smoke. Some people are more, you know, tell me. Yeah, well, it's, it's basically showing itself, right? It's giving, it's, it's giving itself away because uh -huh. if it was just all smoke, I would look at the volume, the velocity, the density, and the color of the smoke to try to read and figure out exactly where the higher velocities of the smoke are because that'll tell you where the higher pressures are coming up and tell you where the base of the fire is. But in this scenario, it's already through the roof. It's already lit off. It, you know, it's, it's, gonna, it's already giving itself away. So it's right here on this right side, this Alpha Delta corner of the home. Did we rehearse this? I mean, did, tell people watching this. Did, no. Have you seen this video before? Never seen it. How are you that good? <laughs> I guess because I've watched a lot of videos, watched a lot of game film. Amazing. You, that, there's no wonder that your page has 273,000 followers. So, and you got, how yeah. many books have you written now? Just the one, The Evolving Fireground, but we're working on our second edition for The Evolving Fireground. Um, I've been in other books, you know, chapters and things like that, fire behavior chapter yep. for the fire engineering, Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2 textbook, and um, some other small little snippets here and there. But yeah. what, what can we look forward to in the next book with, with uh, PJ Norman? You know, just more research. So, uh, and the, the example I'll, I'll use the most of is our search chapter. Uh, that was everything that was done in Cobb County, Georgia, and all of the, the search stuff from our search cadre. Every, that whole chapter is written on what we do in Cobb. Well, now we have the search study that came out from F FSRRI to completely back up and validate all of those things we were already doing because we were talking about closing doors, searching with closed doors, getting people out of windows first rather than taking them down dirty hallways. And it was a, it's something that has been our culture for a long time. We've been really successful at it. So I'm excited to see that chapter grow a little bit yeah. and then have validity from the actual research um, to do it because before it was just subjective. It was just my, my own opinions and I was writing off my experience. What was your favorite uh, chapter or moment from that book that we can look forward to? Uh, you know, probably some more of the fire attack stuff. I think the fire attack chapter gets uh, updated and um, we already talked about maneuverability of hose lines. And you don't need a, that many GPMs and there's going to be a lot of that in there. Talking about lower GPMs, hose line maneuverability, getting water into the right place to for uh, ultimate extinguishment. Cool. And then when can we look forward to seeing the book? It'll be released FDIC 2026. All right. Well, can't wait. Yeah, well, man. Mr. Sean Gray, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very and, much. And uh, just, it was such a pleasure to see you in your element in Cobb County with your crew and uh, just real excited to show everybody all that tactical knowledge that you shared with us on that day. Awesome, man. Thank you guys for coming down. Thank Appreciate you very it. Much. All right. Take care. Curious to learn more about TFT nozzles? Check out the new sortable nozzle page at tft.com shop.